We're here at Chelsea. This is Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. Ruthie, this is the owner, and, and tell us uh, who are some of the featured artists today. Welcome to Amsterdam Whitney Gallery. We have the two queens here with us. The Queen of Chelsea, Crystal Hart, and the Queen of the Roses, Mrs. Nancy Balmert. We are honored to pay homage to the Chelsea art world, and Nancy Balmert creates beautiful landscape and nature paintings and floral paintings. And Crystal Hart, we give our heartfelt thanks for all of your support and love to the Chelsea art community. And to pay homage to this, we have a La Vie en Rose soiree, and Nancy Balmert painted the beautiful Olympiad Rose right behind us. And perhaps Nancy can tell Crystal a little bit about Olympiad Rose and her different flowers. So I love to take photos of flowers when I travel with my husband. And we were traveling from um, Salem, Oregon up to Seattle at this point in time. We stopped in Chehalis, Washington, and uh, we stopped for lunch. And there was this beautiful rose just outside the restaurant. So I snapped a picture of the rose and then came home and cleaned it up. <laughs> Took the chicken wire out from behind the rose that was holding the uh, plastic up and uh, we ended up with um, the rose. Behind me we have a wonderful glass, like a toast. Uh, yes, okay, I wanted to paint some flowers with a piece of crystal. And so I went to a florist and found beautiful orchids to paint. And then I had this piece of crystal and I, I painted this, it's named Orchids and Crystal. <laughs> anyway, and so I worked... It's very real, very real. I worked very hard on getting the crystal to look like it really looks in person. And so, it does. Oh, thank you. And then this one um, is, since the, um, this, the showcase will be here through Easter and Mother's Day, I wanted to paint some lilies. And, oh, a couple years ago, I was walking the steep stairs in Seattle, you know, 132 up, 132 steps down, and at the bottom of the stairs um, were these beautiful lilies. And so I took several pictures of the lilies, and now it's turned into a painting. These are the orchids that were given to me on Mother's Day from my kids, and so it's very special to me. Um, named it Moon Orchids. And then, and then your last one. Yes, the last one is white rhododendron, and I took this picture in Naples, Florida, um, when I was traveling there with my husband. So, anyway, those are my paintings that are here. So that's Nancy Balmart, as we call her the Yellow Rose of Texas, and she travels all over the world and photographs and in paints flowers. I do, yes, thank you. We're here at Amsterdam Whitney Gallery. With us is Neris Levy, and behind me is her painting. And she said, Yes, it's Olive Grove Asolo in the Veneto in Italy. It's the hill town for Venice, and this is in a villa, and it's the foothills of the Dolomites. Yes, and so it's done on site, and I always work on site. I'm a planner artist, and I'm inspired by nature. Yes, so I always do my paintings. Uh, I am also a climate change artist and I work in polar regions in the Arctic and Antarctic. Yeah. Yes. And do you go to Italy? Yes, I work in Italy a lot and I'm very inspired by the landscape and the climate, but also by the colors. And so um, these olive groves flow down the hills, you know, they're like rivers of trees. And so I've tried to capture the movement of nature in this painting. The trees just shimmer in the sunlight. It's just very beautiful. So thank you for interviewing me. I really appreciate you being here. And, and you know what, before we go, you said something about climate control. Could you? Climate change. 
uh, climate change, and, and what are your thoughts on it? Well, I, be, I think basically everybody has to wake up to it. I work in the Arctic and Antarctic and do a lot of work basically with young people, and I think everybody should really wake up to the issue. Uh, I'm a climate change painter as well, so uh, I think uh, for young people particularly, there should be exhibitions of polar regions and things like that as well, you know, to highlight the importance of these areas to the world. But nature in general is in charge of us, we're not in charge of it. I think that's the answer. All the way from California, we have Lori Moll, and her work is behind me. And I know one thing about Lori, well, two things. Actually, don't you do a lot with music, and you always have a heart in, in your painting? I do, yes. I love um, to paint. So a lot of times the brush strokes will just automatically make a heart. And if that's the case, then I try to keep it in there. And if not, I hide one for you to find. <laughs> Which is but always I know you fun. Love that I love that because uh, that's my last name, Hart. And I, I remember a tie-in with music. Yes, I've been painting music for over 30 years now, and the instruments and um, sheet music just become part of the whole composition when I'm sketching, and so um, it's it's really fun because everybody loves music. And so it touches them, you know. It's like I heard a song this morning, it took me right back to the fifth grade. And so it, it's been a popular series for me, the music series, and then, of course, with hearts. <laughs> this, this is called Carly's Purse, and if you look closely, it says in here, Anticipation, one of Carly Simon's songs. That. <laughs> yes, and um, and this one's called Your Ticket. I um, put the sheet music in this heart, and it says best stress relief is music, and that's so true, especially during these times. Um, and of course, the great big heart <laughs> is nice and bright. A lot of checkerboards in my work. And they all have kind of a graphic feeling to them. I d was a graphic designer way back when, so um, that still shines through. <laughs> the next one is called Moody Blues, and it's, um, it's a little different in that I put a landscape in with the music. And there's always a lot of what I call my Matisse tables. <laughs> and. Um, there's a lot of things that keep showing up and repeating in my work, and it, it, but they're always so different. Um, and let me see, the next one's called Martini Bar. It's with a trumpet player and a, a, drama, a drummer, and they're waiting for the bar to open and enjoy the view. A lot of cityscapes in my um, landscapes, a lot of vineyards. Um, the one down the way has... Um, a vineyard landscape in it. It's called Taste of the Valley, and I worked in. I lived in Sonoma County, California, for 30 years. So a lot of vineyards show up, and a lot of wine, and um, so they're fun to do. Yeah. That last one down there. Oh, and the the other tall eight by 24. It's a really unusual size, like this one. Um, and they're kind of really fun to do. They become kind of like storyboards, is how I, musical storyboards. And I just love the bass. It's called Full Body Jazz. And it has wine in it. And of course, that big heart with the sheet music. So it's just, I love to paint. I have a beautiful studio in um, the Central Coast down by Pismo Beach. And so lots of sunshine down there. And it's very inspiring. <laughs> So she got a taste of some snow here in New York. Yes, so I, welcome to New York from California. I love it. This is my 18th trip here, and it's great to be here. I particularly like this wall, Michael Glazier's work. It, it, it just takes me somewhere, like back in time or history. Okay. I, I, that is how it's supposed to uh, convey. Michael Glazer Crystal is a Ukrainian-American artist noted in the Ukraine for his set designs, theater designs, and this is a, a nostalgic look at the past. We can hear a whisper of 
remembrances of long ago days, almost like a postcard, almost like a nostalgic view of 100 years ago in his neo-impressionist work with the beautiful women in the field rejoicing in the sunlight and his beautiful, beautiful uh, floral still life entitled August. Amsterdam Whitney Gallery is thrilled to be showcasing Michael Glazer. Gary Eshwai, all the way from Hawaii, and you know, it, it has that feel, of the, the feel of maybe the ocean and, and the smoothness and, and the love of the waves and, and the breeze. That is exactly it, and Crystal, you have so um, uh, pinpointed the hallmark work of Gary Eshwai, who's um, Asian American living in uh, Hawaii, and his very pastel hued prints are renowned. People love his work work for the uh, the grace and the tranquility that it offers. We can hear the sound of the ocean, uh, we can hear the gentleness, the relaxation of nature, and we can also say he has a co-relationship with nature. Gary, yes why? Now we have sculpture and this is Tom Ashbourne. Hello, and how are you? Good. good to meet you and it's fantastic. Wonderful. I you. love your little and, Valentine. And I, you look fantastic as well. <laughs> Oh, like lots of lots of little crystals, right? <laughs> and and, and where did you travel from, Tom? Uh, we're here from Toronto, Canada, and uh, it's fantastic to be here. New York is a wonderful place and lots of energy, and we're very privileged to be here at this show at, at the Amsterdam Whitney. Uh, it's a tremendous show, and I'm really really excited to be here. So my pieces are look great, and they've. You know, I would welcome you to come and see them. You know, it's fantastic. Now, how many pieces do you have here? He uh, does sculpture. I do sculpture, and I have seven pieces here. And uh, they're in all different rooms and all different venues. And they will fit in your location just as well as they do here. Each one is unique and different, uh, made of different materials. and. Uh, they all have tremendous energy, they all have a really engaging feel to them, and um, you know, I'm very proud of them, and they're, they're wonderful. This, we have one right here, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it to tell okay. a little bit about that. So one. this piece is called Blue Eye Girl 2, and as you can tell, it's got a lovely blue eye to it. Um, it's in a uh, sort of a pink, yellow, Wonderstone, and it's got lovely lines. It, it's got, it just draws you into it and, it, and it makes you feel you want to touch it. And touching my pieces is part of the ex exercise. Um, that's how you get to know the piece is by touching it. Um, don't have to worry about finger marks or any of that sort of stuff. They're all well protected and they're wonderful. And you can see them from all different angles. Um, and that's one of the things I really love about sculpture, is that if you do it right, you get to see them from all different angles. And they, they are different, different light, different angles, different locations in, in your, your home or your office, and they have a life to them. And every day you can walk in and say, hello, I love you. And that's what I do, and uh, I'm privileged to have the opportunity to make them and uh, so privileged to be here to be able to show you how they all work. There is a lovely white alabaster piece and the piece if you put it in the, the light it, it actually glows and it's got all kinds of different shapes and forms to it. There's an incredible green piece um, that has all kinds of little lines in the stone and it's, it's, it's a little hard to explain, but it's just fantastic with respect to the, the colors and the shapes and the texture in the stone. Um, even when it's all smooth, it has this wonderful texture to it. Um, there is a purple marble piece that's got this lovely purple, I think it's called purple veil marble. And it's got great lines, it's got a great feeling, and it's, um, it's just light and bright and, and happy. And, you know, seriously, everything has got to have energy. Everything's got to be happy. Like, in this world, we all should be happy, and having happy things around us is the way to go. I mean, seriously, you look at something, it makes you smile. It's great, and that's the way life 
should be is you have these things that make you smile. With us all the way from East Hampton, Larry Randolph. And now, a wonderful work right behind me. Do you want to start off with that? Please? Well, uh, this is called Roth Coco. And obviously, we have an interpretation of a Rothko, but there's the contrast and the exuberance of 18th century ornament. And so we're contrasting Rococo with the contemporary. And how'd you come up with this, this idea? Well, I always like uh, doing kind of an art remix. You know, nowadays, people in music are doing remix with music. And so why not remix art from the distant past and the, the not so distant past? And your philosophy on art? Well, I just en enjoy what I'm doing, but uh, I want people to focus on some of the issues we have now. And this, this painting is really fun, but the other three here focus on some pretty serious issues. Talking about the issues, right in the corner uh, there, now tell us about that issue and, and what you're right. portraying. That particular uh, painting is based on a Rubens of St. George slaying the dragon. In my version, we have Zelensky engaged in the armed struggle for Ukraine. Uh, we have uh, Putin in place of the devil. We have the other uh, black characters from history, Stalin, Hitler in the bottom of the painting. And then we have a statue which is in the center of Ukraine in Kiev and we have the wheat fields of Ukraine beyond so I try to encapsulate the conflict uh, the painting is really about hope. Now moving on we have you said a girl with a blue tube? Uh, yes, uh, other people have satirized Vermeer but I try to be somewhat sympathetic and so we've done a a 21st century girl, and of course she has lost one of her pearl earrings. It's on the corner of the painting, and we have her. Oh, I see, it's right on the corner. There, right, yes. we we have her tattoos. We have her contemporary blouse. We have color uh, at uh, in her lips that match the blouse. We have little uh, some uh, red streaks in her hair, and then she's communicating with all of us using a Bluetooth. And just a little detail, the original Vermeer does not have eyelashes. And so in Larry's version, we have eyelashes. <laughs> now, this looks like a, this painting over here. It looks very exotic. Well, uh, the, the fourth painting is uh, Venice. And it's going to say Venice. It is, and it's based on a J.M.W. Turner uh, painting of Venice in the Metropolitan uh, Museum. Uh, but we have all of our modern uh, 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 follies, you might call them, from the gondolier that still plies the canals. However, his passengers are using cell phones instead of looking at uh, the beauty of Venice, but most of all, we have an enormous cruise ship dominating the lagoon. Fortunately, Venice has now outlawed the cruise ship as of last year coming into the lagoon. But these things uh, encapsulate problems that our uh, civilization uh, are, is facing. With us all the way from New Mexico and Alaska, Smokey Thomas. And this piece behind us is yours. Yes. The title is You Are Radiant. It's about a person exuberating radiance. Just the beauty, the dynamic, positive energy, good thoughts, good feelings. Now, I, I've read where the color yellow makes you very happy. Oh, yes. Yes, this is my first yellow piece. Oh, is it? It is, yeah. And why'd you pick the yellow? I just wanted the, the energy to, to flow for just somebody exuberating radiance. And just your philosophy on art. Oh, just, just feeling, 
to abstract, to express, to express just without putting any definite, any definition on it, just uh, using color as a way to express. Crystal, we are so thrilled that Smokey Thomas traveled in all the way on the snowy weather from New Mexico. And we really feel that Smokey Thomas has brought celestial art with a golden halo and a spiritual haze to Amsterdam Whitney Gallery. So we send celestial blessings and many thanks to you, our darling beloved, beloved Smokey. And Crystal, I also wanted to uh, uh, call to your attention, right behind you is a beautiful abstract work of the artist named um, uh, Wendy Yo. Wendy is uh, from uh, Great Britain, and she has ethereal paintings that have water, nature, landscape, and really reflects her relationship with nature. Continuing, we also have over in that direction there, Annette Tan, who has beautiful nature landscape work, and I feel it's like a pathway to heaven that she uh, entreats us to um, have a co-relationship with nature. And on my right is the Japanese artist, Misa Ahara, whose wonderful abstract work have a non-objective vocabulary. And Misa Ahara can say more with her beautiful paintings. It's called Verko, V-E-R-K-O, her Verko series, which reflects um, uh, another wonderful visual lexicon of communicating emotions, spirits, and feelings. And once again, we thank our beautiful Queen of Chelsea, Crystal Hart. Thank you. Crystal, may I introduce to you the Italian artist named Esther Crocetta. Esther's works are very monumental, extremely colorful. Some people call them dreams. Some people can say it's um, a, a dark nightmare vision. But these are innermost thoughts, emotional, visceral feelings that we all experience. And uh, Esther Cro Crochetta is brilliant in crystallizing these emotions and these figures in the innermost recesses of our memory. Please remember, Esther Crochetta. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Elliot Gilbert, a senior member of the artistic community who is renowned for his landscape paintings. They are uh, celestial, they are traditional, they are impressionist in nature. Nell Elliot and his wife have traveled all over the world inspired by the beauty of nature. And Elliot is another outstanding artist who's had a co-relationship with nature and as I say, a rendezvous with nature, Mr. Elliot Gilbert. Would you like to just uh, say a quick hello, Elliot? Just say, say hello. 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 <laughs> there we go. Elliot Gilbert. My paintings, many were done in France, and it helped me escape from worldly affairs. Painting is an escape from the realities of life into your own realities and how you feel about the world about you. Amsterdam Whitney Gallery says, Bonjour. Amsterdam Whitney says, Bienvenue. Yes. We are delighted to be welcoming the French photographer, Joachim Lombard, who lives in France, and then sometimes part of the year here in New York. And this is Joachim Lombard's outstanding black and white monochrome series entitled um entitled imprudence and imprudence or imprudence in french and this is showing i would say um some of the conflicts the dynamism of new york city it's a uh, silver print photography a cla very classic and i use uh, uh windows mirrors whatever's available on the street to try to create Illusion. So, Adults, windows. right. Anything where there's like several, where I can catch some, several layers, and I do this in Paris and here. It's all in New York. Yeah, all in New York. this is uh, near Soho. 
in Soho. This is Tribeca. This is uh, Union Square. Times Square over there. From these? I think it's the one on the left over there. Because it's like, yeah, there's like, a, I don't know why it's good. It's good, but I don't know why. That's why I like it. It's not organized, but still, it's organized chaos. Hello, so this is my favorite work of Joachim Lombard, so the photographer, French photographer, because this work actually represents New York and its totality, meaning you, it's, a t it's a picture taken from outside, and you see the inside of a touristy store, and you kind of see the juxtaposition and that duality between the outside and the inside of just you know, a random street in New York. So for me, this is the, the best one because it's chaotic, and but it's harmoniously chaotic. Crystal, may I introduce to you the work of the Italian artist right behind me, Maurizio Diana. And Maurizio has a wonderful view, and it's a very interesting perspective. He's so cosmopolitan, so international, being Italian, and this is his view of New York City, uh, of the high rises, of the, uh, we can feel the dynamism of the city, and we are thrilled to have the dynamic and bustling work of Maurizio Diana. Crystal, on the snowy day, Amsterdam Whitney Gallery in Chelsea is delighted to be featuring and showcasing the monumental canvases of Toby Gottesman Schneier, a Florida artist who previously resided here in New York City. Toby's work are uh, non-objective, they're abstract, polychromatic, spectacular, and one of the titles of her work is even spectacular. Toby investigates gravitational uh, pull of life, the uh, beautiful colors. She uses the visceral power of emotions, colors, the canvas to convey her deep thoughts, her deep emotions, and her connection to the world. We've been here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery at 210 11th Avenue. That's between 24th and 25th Street. That's correct, Crystal. This is the heart of Chelsea, the heart of the international art world, and we feature the most exciting artists in, uh, in the world, so international, so cosmopolitan, and yet so fabulous. We thank you all. Come and visit us. And thank you to Crystal. <laughs> and thank you. Thanks bye -bye. for watching. Thank you for being here. Bye bye. bye, -bye.